Something that always comes up when you're working a tech job, especially in cybersecurity, is the idea of compliance. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned pro or you're brand new to the career field, at some point you'll hear somebody talking about compliance. You might also hear people say that compliance means nothing or that compliance is everything. In this video, we're gonna talk about what compliance is and how that fits into a cybersecurity department's program and the entire organization. Before we get into the rest of the content, I wanna take a minute to talk about today's video sponsor, Vanta. Whether you're starting or scaling your company's security program, demonstrating top-notch security practices and establishing trust is more important than ever. Vanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and more, saving you time and money while helping you build customer trust. Managing compliance for one standard, let alone multiple, can be complex, but one of the features that I personally love about Vanta is that it allows you to see everything that matters in one location to help keep you informed about the status of your security and compliance program. Plus, you can streamline security reviews by automating questionnaires and demonstrating your security posture with a customer-facing trust center all powered by Vanta AI. Over 7,000 global companies like Alassian, Flow Health, and Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. It really says something that so many companies are relying on Vanta. You can check out Vanta yourself by visiting vanta.com slash John. And just for being a part of my audience, they're going to give you $1,000 off Vanta. That's vanta.com forward slash John for $1,000 off Vanta. Big thank you to Vanta for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so the first thing that we really need to do is define what compliance actually means. If you look up a definition of compliance, you'll see something along the lines of this. Compliance in cybersecurity involves adhering to laws, regulations, standards, and policies designed to protect information and systems. These can be industry-specific regulations like HIPAA for healthcare, GDPR for data protection in the European Union, or general frameworks like ISO 27001. Maybe now you're asking, what does that actually mean though, unless lawyer type speak? Essentially, there are these different security or compliance requirements that exist. For instance, if you want to be able to process credit card transactions, or store healthcare data about people, and if you're compliant, then that means you meet a certain level of controls to a satisfactory level. Sometimes you'll actually get a certification saying that you meet the requirements. Other times you might just get a report or an attestation from a third party saying that you meet the controls. Regardless of which compliance standard that you wanna think about, the high level goal is to reduce the chance of something bad happening in your organization's network and possibly just in the organization in general. Let's dive deeper into some of the important reasons why compliance matters. The first reason that compliance matters is because of legal and financial consequences. Non-compliance can lead to hefty fines, legal action, and even jail time for responsible parties. For example, under GDPR, organizations can be fined up to 20 million euros or 4% of their annual global turnover, whichever is higher. That's a massive financial hit that can cripple businesses. Beyond fines, non-compliance can result in lawsuits from customers or partners, loss of business, or damaged reputation. In extreme cases, executives might face personal liability. For this video, we aren't going to dive into the calculations about choosing technologies to implement, but you need to recognize that sometimes companies will take a chance on fines depending on the cost of implementing a security control. A second reason why compliance matters is to protect sensitive data. Compliance frameworks are designed to safeguard sensitive information, whether it's personal data, financial records, or proprietary business information. Following compliance requirements or guidelines can help prevent data breaches or at least minimize the probability of one, which can have devastating effects on individuals and organizations alike if one happens. Consider a healthcare provider. If they fail to comply with HIPAA regulations, patient information could be exposed, leading to identity theft, medical fraud, and loss of patient trust. Compliance ensures that there's security measures in place to protect this data. Another reason why compliance matters is to build customer trust. Customers are more likely to trust and do business with companies that demonstrate a commitment to protecting their data. Compliance shows that an organization takes security seriously and is proactive about safeguarding information. In today's digital world, trust is a valuable currency. A single data breach can erode customer confidence and loyalty. By maintaining compliance, you can build a reputation for reliability and integrity, which can be a competitive advantage. The various compliance certifications in the industry aren't just a one-time achievement. Compliance is an ongoing effort where you'll be audited at least once per year, depending on the certification. Now that we've discussed some important reasons why compliance matters, I wanna go ahead and introduce some common compliance requirements to you. 
Also, make sure to check out the description because I've included some links to some resources that will help you better learn and understand these different compliance requirements. HIPAA, or the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, was created to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the healthcare system. It includes administrative simplification provisions that requires HHS to adopt national standards for electronic healthcare transactions and code sets unique health identifiers, and security. Essentially, anytime that you're dealing with health records, this is gonna be relevant. The best place to start learning about HIPAA is the official website. The second standard is ISO 27001. According to the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, their website, it says the ISO 27001 standard provides companies of any size and from all sectors of activity with guidance for establishing, implementing, maintaining, and continually improving an information security management system. Conformity with ISO 27001 means that an organization or business has put in place a system to manage risks related to the security of data owned or handled by the company and that the system respects all the best practices and principles enshrined in this international standard. If you ever hear somebody talking about an ISMS or an information security management system, they're talking about this ISO standard. Now this standard is different from HIPAA in that it's much more comprehensive in what it covers. Unfortunately, the actual ISO 27001 standard isn't free if you want a full copy, but I put a link to it and a link to a popular course in the description. If you're serious about learning ISO 27001, you should purchase a copy of the document, which is about 144 US dollars. Also keep in mind that with ISO, many of the requirements have their own individual standard beyond 27001, so it can be expensive to learn, but it's certainly worth it because so many companies worldwide adopt the ISO 27001 standard. The next standard is the NIST Risk Management Framework, or RMF. If you ever plan to work for the United States government or military or a contractor, you're definitely gonna wanna learn about the NIST Risk Management Framework, or RMF. According to the NIST website, the Risk Management Framework, or RMF, provides a process that integrates security, privacy, and cyber supply chain risk management activities into the system development lifecycle. This risk-based approach to control selection and specification considers effectiveness, efficiency, and constraints due to applicable laws, directives, executive orders, policies, standards, or regulations. If we're comparing compliance standards, NIST Risk Management Framework is very similar to ISO 27001, except it's very targeted at the US government, military, and its contractors. That doesn't mean that others can't implement it, but it's fairly cost prohibitive, meaning that it's expensive to actually implement, especially if the government isn't paying you for it. A positive with NIST RMF compared to ISO 27001 is that you can access the requirements for free on the NIST website and it's very comparable in how comprehensive it is. SOC 2 is a standard that you'll see if you work for a service provider. According to the SOC 2 website, many organizations outsource services and they need assurance relevant to security, availability, and processing integrity of the systems the service organizations use to process users' data and the confidentiality and privacy of the information processed by these systems. SOC 2 reports provide pertinent information to outsourcing organizations and their auditors to assess and address the risks and controls associated with the outsourced services. Although SOC 2 is important, it's not as comprehensive as ISO 27001 or NIST RMF. That doesn't mean, though, that you can just ignore it if it applies to you, but certainly it doesn't require as much. You can also have a Type 1 and a Type 2 certification that vary based on the length of the audit period. So how can organizations stay compliant? Well, it starts with understanding the relevant laws and regulations for your industry. We discuss common compliance requirements that exist and that you should become familiar with, but there's also more that you might come across depending on your company and where you live. All these certifications require a regular review and update to your security policies to conduct risk assessments and to ensure all employees are trained on compliance requirements. Engage with cybersecurity professionals who can help you navigate the complex landscape of compliance. Remember, compliance isn't a one-time task. It's an ongoing process that requires vigilance and commitment. Question of the day. Have you ever heard of these compliance requirements that we talked about? Have you heard of others? Let me know down in the comment section below. After this video, I want you to remember what we discussed about why compliance matters. Compliance helps avoid legal and financial penalties, protects sensitive data, and builds customer trust. It's not just about following rules, it's about creating a secure and trustworthy environment for your business and customers. At the end of the day, compliance is a starting point to give your organization a solid security foundation 
but is by no means the end of the road or a stopping point. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to stay updated on the latest content. Also, if you have any questions or topics that you'd like me to discuss, drop them in the comments below. Till next time, stay secure and stay compliant.